dive into luxury and opulence as we explore the exclusive world of private swimming pools. From infinity pools perched on the edge of breathtaking landscapes to pools with unique designs and cutting-edge features, here are the top 15 most amazing private swimming pools in the world. Starting with number 15, the Glass Bottom Pool. While luxury apartments generally feature gyms, spas, and pools, the glass bottom pool on the rooftop of the Market Square Tower in Houston, Texas is a bit more luxurious than most. This clear glass pool juts out about 3 meters over the edge of the apartment and above the city streets below. The 150-meter drop offers incredible urban views, and despite looking dangerous, the 20-centimeter thick plexiglass makes the pool secure. However, if you'd like to go for a swim, you're pretty much out of luck, as you gotta get an invitation from one of the building residents. Number 14. St. Leon 10 Located in the hills of the South African city of Cape Town, St. Leon 10 is a cool residence with an even cooler pool. Not only does its infinity pool and inset jacuzzi overlook the coast, but its transparent walls allow you to look at the ocean while swimming. This in turn makes it one of South Africa's most unique and luxurious private pool offerings. Number 13. The Sonoma Valley Swim Pad California's Sonoma Valley is known for its incredible wine, but it turns out that it's also home to a great pool. Built with a massive mountain and waterfall that blend into its natural surroundings, its main feature is a 27-meter-long infinity pool edge that vanishes into a cavern below, making it appear as if the water flows over the edge and into the valley. It also has a beach entrance, beautiful geysers, a tiki bar, and a long set of cave-like tunnels inside the mountain. And it's thanks to all these features that it costs an incredible 750,000 bucks. Number 12, The Mountain. Known simply as The Mountain, this pool came in at a whopping $2 million. It's located in the American state of Utah. This first stunning feature is its three meter tall mountain. This mountain is embellished with five waterfalls, an adjacent fountain, an 18-meter-long slide, and a secret grotto, kitchen, and change room. While the mountain is pretty cool on its own, it's also surrounded by a massive 42-meter-long pool connected to a 90-meter-long lazy river and a 16-meter-long and 8-meter-deep underwater tunnel. It's awesome. Therefore, many would argue that it was worth its insane price tag. Number 11. The Ring of Fire Pool Complete with a 25-person hot tub, a 3-meter-long waterfall, a 9-meter-long slide with misters, and a basin that can fit 1.4 million liters of water, the Ring of Fire Pool is top-notch. And while the additions such as a $120 cast fountain from Italy and a cavern behind the waterfalls with an underwater bar, flat-screen TV, and fridge give it some extra flair, what really sets it apart is its Ring of Fire. At night, propane burners beneath the water can be ignited to create flames that appear to dance on the surface of the water, making this pool nothing short of incredible. Number 10. The Scuba Pool While Oklahoma isn't exactly known for its incredible swimming facilities, the Scuba Pool in the city of Mustang brings the ocean into the heart of the Midwest. While the real deal may be over 800 kilometers away, this impressive backyard facility provides a great dive spot for scuba enthusiasts. At 49 meters in length and a little over 40 meters deep, it's more than large enough to dive and swim in. And if that wasn't enough, it's also got a number of features. For example, it's got a 38 meter long lazy river that has a customizable current. This can go from gentle to extremely fast, and it can be used to simulate ocean swimming or diving. The pool also has a massive underwater world. This underwater area is filled with winding tunnels and boulders, ensuring that scuba diving never gets dull. If you want to get a break from the water, you can even spend some time in one of two cave grottos, complete with seating areas and televisions, so you can do everything from relax to entertain. If that wasn't enough, there's even a hidden 3-meter-tall diving platform, so you can have the thrill of barreling into the water. And given the fact the entrance is so hard to locate, it keeps things safe for any kids that happen to be in the area. Would you further consider that there's a series of waterfalls that can be controlled at the push of a button? It's not hard to see why this private pool is nothing short of incredible. Number 9. The Sky Pool the Italian Dolomites are known for their incredible height and beauty, making them the perfect place to travel for a hiking trip in the summer or a skiing trip in the winter. However, if you've got some cash and want to experience the area in a luxurious light, then a visit to the Sky Pool may be in the cards. Located on the property of the Hotel Hubertus, this four-star establishment is located very close to the Austrian border and provides beautiful views of the mountainous backcountry. 
And while the hotel provides great outdoor opportunities, a trip to its sky pool is an absolute must. 12 meters high and 25 meters long, it's heated at an ultra-comfortable 33 degrees Celsius year-round and allows you to swim in a glass see-through pool over the valley below. Its wood supports and stone surrounding walls also make for an artistic statement as it manages to both stand out and blend into its outdoor surroundings. Best of all, if for whatever reason you get bored of being in this incredibly awesome body of water, you can also opt to swim in one of its five other pools, which include a panoramic outdoor pool, an outdoor relaxation pool, a super salty brine flotation pool, a warm outdoor whirlpool, and even an indoor adventure pool. And if that doesn't suffice, then there's also a lie-down whirlpool, a seated whirlpool, and if you want to get a little bit frisky, a nude whirlpool. Now, I should warn you that staying here won't be cheap. After all, at the low end, room starts at a price of about 310 bucks per night, and increase to as much as 450 a night. However, small discounts can be applied for multi-night stays. Yet, so long as you're willing to fork up the cash, then it would be well worth a visit to this incredible and often less traveled part of Italy. Number 8. The San Alfonso del Mar Seawater Pool Now, while it may seem strange to place a massive beach-like pool right in front of an actual beach, this is a luxury you can experience at the San Alfonso del Mar Resort. It's located about 100 kilometers west of Santiago, Chile. It's considered to be the second largest pool in the world, and was the largest when the construction of it finished in 2006. Coming in at a tad over a kilometer in length and up to three and a half meters in depth, it's so large that it has the surface area of more than 15 football fields. This necessitates the pool being filled with 250 million liters of salt water, all of which is pumped from the adjacent Pacific. This is filtered using a special process patented by Chilean scientist Fernando Fishman, with this process being top-notch as it allows for nearly unlimited quantities of water to be filtered efficiently and effectively. In any case, once in the pool, guests of the hotel can enjoy the creative programming on offer. For example, vacationers can enjoy water sports such as kayaking, scuba diving, aqua fitness, and of course, sailing. If you prefer to be out of the water, you can also enjoy on-land activities such as tennis and volleyball, while facilities such as a spa, a nightclub, and even a professional-grade soccer stadium are also available. Best of all, if for whatever reason it's raining outside, you can also enjoy the resort's indoor artificial beach the first and only roofed beach of its kind in South America. It works by covering the heads of vacationers with the help of a glass pyramid. This rain protection is complemented by a top-tier interior, which features heated sand and warm water. Now, it's worth noting that staying here ain't cheap. After all, you'll have to shell out about 300 bucks per night. However, given the fact that this is necessary in order to access this top-notch pool, I'd say that almost any price is probably worth it. Moving on to number seven, Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace has a grand total of 775 rooms, and one of the secret rooms that's not shown on tours is the swimming pool. In 1938, King George VI commissioned its construction due to his desire to have heir to the throne Princess Elizabeth and her sister, Princess Margaret, continue swim lessons while not being in the public eye. The location decided on was the north side of the palace, and by the spring of 1939, it was completed. Unfortunately, timing ended up being pretty crummy, as World War II broke out later that year. This forced the two princesses to move to Windsor Castle for their safety, and this proved to be for the best. After all, during the bombing of London in September 1940, Buckingham Palace was hit, and one of the bombs fell close to the swimming pool. Thankfully, the pool was rebuilt after the war, and over the following decades, all four of Queen Elizabeth's children learned to swim at Buckingham Palace. Then, Prince Charles even used the pool to sail model boats, making it a spot for enjoyment and relaxation for the entire family. According to classmate Richard Alston, he'd often invite himself and his other classmates over. However, while the non-royal invitees would all have small model boats made in woodworking class, Charles had a full-on replica of the Britannia. Well, in any case, after Charles had grown up, the pool saw continued use, and to this date, Kate, William, and their children apparently use it quite regularly. Swimming at this pool, though, has its own set of rules. Apparently, the pool isn't just for members of the royal family. Staff can use the pool, too. However, if they'd like to do so, they have to get out when one of the royals appears, unless invited to remain, which often happens. They also can't attempt to get in while the royals are swimming. Beyond these rules, it's now also a policy for the pool to be kept at a cooler temperature, as King Charles reportedly prefers to use as little energy in heating it as possible for the sake of the environment. Number 6. A Billionaire's Bath 
Well, in today's day and age, the richest of the rich tend to show off with yachts, fancy cars, and expensive watches. However, in the ancient times of the Romans, one of the best ways to show off your wealth was by having your very own private bathhouse. In 2007, one such complex was dug up near Ciampino Airport in Rome, the home of a certain Quintus Servilius Pudens. He was the modern equivalent of a billionaire during the time of the Emperor Hadrian. According to the historical record, Quintus likely made his fortune by making bricks, which was one of the main materials for Roman buildings. It was with this brick money that he built his mansion, and in all likelihood his bathhouse was used to throw lavish parties. While it's unclear whether or not it was ever open to the public, what is clear is that it was a stately feature that set his home apart from those of the less fortunate. In any case, his home was discovered on the site of a suburban park, and it was on these premises that they found his impressive bathhouse. The complex begins with a caldarium, which is a sauna-like room that was heated by hot air piped behind the walls. This was possible thanks to a furnace, with this furnace being stoked by his slaves. The next area was the hot bath, which was similarly heated by the slaves. It was here that Quintus and his fellows would likely relax, talk politics, and depending on the type of party, even get physical. Upon excavation, it was discovered that marble fragments were left behind, although important features such as the bronze cauldron used to bring bathing water to piping hot temperatures were ripped out by scavengers long ago. And while pillaging has made the villa look far different than it used to, it still is a stunning piece of great historic value, and it has more or less remained untouched since the Goths temporarily converted the home into a fortress in the 6th century. So, it's fair to say that this private pool would have been the place to be thousands of years ago. Number 5. The White House while not widely publicized, it turns out that all presidents entering the White House get access to an incredible private pool. The first pool was located indoors and built all the way back in 1933, so that President Franklin Delano Roosevelt could take therapeutic swims in order to help him manage his polio. However, in 1970, the pool was covered in order to make space for the press briefing room, and for a period of five years, the president had no water to dip his toes in. This changed in 1975, when President Gerald Ford created a 6-meter-wide and 15-meter-long rectangular pool on the South Lawn near the West Wing of the White House. Reportedly, Ford made the decision due to his genuine love of swimming. Before becoming president, Ford swam twice daily at his home in Alexandria, Virginia, one time early in the morning and another time after work in the evening. After becoming president, Ford was bummed out a little that he couldn't swim anymore, and his budgetary advisors told him not to build a new pool, since it would make him look rather selfish right before an election year. He made the executive decision, no pun intended, to build it anyway. The area chosen on the South Lawn had previously had a natural screen of bushes and trees. Once built, he happily allowed the press to photograph him swimming inside it, and soon became one of his favorite amenities at this residence. Later on, a cabana, shower, changing facilities, and underground security passage connected to the West Wing were all added, and in 2002 the cabana was upgraded. This cabana is now solar paneled and features heated pipes, plenty of windows, and a raised roof. While it is impossible to know if the pool had an impact on Ford's electoral chances, the former president didn't get to enjoy it for too long. After all, it was just one year later, he lost a bid for re-election to Democrat Jimmy Carter. The whole thing was also pretty expensive. After all, it cost the modern-day equivalent of about $300,000, and was entirely funded by private donations and constructed by a committee headed by the vice chairman of the United States Olympic Swimming Committee. While this might have been overkill, it did make for a nice pool, and I think it's fair to argue that even if it did cost Ford the election, it was a worthy sacrifice. Number 4. A Swiss Money Pool Switzerland is a country that's known for its strong banking system, so it makes perfect sense that it was in this country that a 2013 auction was held surrounding a money pool. More specifically, the auction prize in mind was perfect for any Scrooge McDuck hopeful, as it was a vault filled with 8 million Swiss francs, which worked out to roughly $450,000. Held on a site known as James Edition, which is essentially eBay for billionaires, the auction for this pool of sorts had, weirdly enough, a political backstory. You see, back in October of 2013, a group called the Generation Basic Income Initiative dumped 15 tons of money in front of the Parliament building in Bern, Switzerland. This was done in celebration of this group gaining the 100,000 signatures their initiative needed to go to a national referendum in Switzerland's direct democracy system. 
Now, the initiative in question was a very progressive one. The idea of a basic, unconditional, universal income of roughly $2,800 a month. For those of you not familiar with this, this is essentially a policy where every single citizen receives a set amount of money each month, regardless of their age, income, or class. While there's a lot of debate across the political spectrum about the benefits of such a system, the basic argument for it is it would provide enough money to almost immediately end poverty for the majority of people, making it so that less state resources would need to be spent on welfare, homelessness, and other services. However, others argue that it's an inefficient use of resources, as the money would be better spent on targeted programs for the poorest segments of the population. In any case, the idea is hotly debated, and there's definitely a case to be made that it has some merit. It's because of this that the initiative received a lot of sympathy, and the organization said that the sale of the vault full of money would go to support Generation Basic Income Initiative, which would promote the idea of basic income worldwide, especially in Switzerland. The interesting twist here is that the auction itself was essentially subverted the James Edition website as it used what essentially is a global luxury marketplace to promote a radical egalitarian idea. In any case, while a cool promotional YouTube video was made and the pool of money was sold, the group's efforts were not enough. That's because when the issue was voted on by the Swiss people in June of 2016, they rejected it by a vote of 76.9% to 23.1%. Number 3. Endless Pools For years, swimming pools were a simple concept. They were simply basins of water. However, in the past 25 years, endless pools have allowed swimmers who want an edge to up their game. The basic premise is that these pools are like underwater treadmills. Now, they're generally quite small in size and they use an engine to control the flow of water to a specific speed. The swimmer then swims against the current in order to go at this set speed, with the maximum pace usually being a relatively quick 51 seconds per 100 yards. All in, this is a type of pool that allows athletes to swim in place. This is ideal because unlike a regular pool, swimmers don't have to worry about flip turns, speed consistency, or fellow teammates. Instead, they can swim at a predetermined pace and really hone in on their technique. Now, the benefits of this type of pool setup are pretty much endless. Beyond just being a creative way to get in a workout, this lack of distractions leads to higher quality swimming. If a swimmer desires companionship, some endless pools have enough space for two swimmers, allowing for buddy workouts without the stress of lane management. The pools are also much smaller and therefore easier to in small and small spaces, making them suitable for use inside and even in relatively compact homes. Best of all, if you don't want to swim, these types of pools can even be used for aqua jogging and aqua aerobics, making them great for people of all ages and abilities. Of course, these pools aren't perfect. After all, they generally cost more than $30,000 to install, meaning that they constitute a very high upfront cost. They're also pretty useless for anything that isn't sports related, as they aren't exactly suitable for group events. However, so long as this isn't too much of a concern, they can provide a great return on investment over time. Now, it's worth noting that over time, Endless Pools have expanded their product line, so it's possible to have one of their devices installed into a full-size pool. Mounted on either the deck or wall of an existing pool, these devices come in at a more reasonable price of about twelve dollars to $15,000, and are great because they allow you to have the benefits of an Endless Pool while not sacrificing the benefits of a full-size pool. So if you're fortunate enough to already own a private pool, you can bring it up to the next level by installing one of these incredible machines. Number 2. YouTube Challenge Pools As YouTube has grown into a massive platform, many creatives have found channels and created videos, and these creators have continued to find ways to differentiate themselves with new content. One popular idea has been the creation of swimming pools that are a bit out of the ordinary. Two creators known as the Dangy Brothers are one such example. With the help of the company SoCal Aquatics and Reef Creations, they created what just may be the world's first pool aquarium. Using a standard backyard pool, they first began the project by inserting a bunch of artificial reef inserts inside the pool to make it look like a coral reef. Then they filled the pool with about 61,000 liters of salt water, and in order to prep the pool, they heated it so it remained at a constantly warm temperature. They then added some seaweed, prepped the fish, and then started to release them. With the repertoire including yellow tangs, blue damsels, flame angelfish, porcupine fish, a spotted leopard moray eel, stingrays, and even a couple of sharks. They then proceeded to swim around inside of it, and while it's not exactly clear whether or not they kept this cool pool, it certainly is interesting. YouTuber and self-proclaimed friend of science Mark Rober also got in on the swimming pool game by creating the world's largest jello pool. 
A former NASA engineer, he used six 55-gallon drums with custom propane burners to boil the water. He then had to refrigerate the mixture, and in order to do so, Rober turned to Mother Nature. By deciding to make the pool in Utah in April, the outdoor temperature was cold enough to firm up the jello, but not enough to freeze it. The end result was 14 tons of the gelatin dessert in a pool. Rather than use it all for himself, he ended up erecting a slip and slide for the neighboring kids. And after briefly belly flopping himself, he noted that it was a lot like swimming in snot. And while Rober admitted that it took a brutal amount of work to put it all together, I'd say that it was certainly worth it. A final example of this pool phenomenon in action is when the YouTuber Veritasium decided to fill his pool with 10,000 shade balls. Now, for those of you that don't know, shade balls are small, usually black plastic spheres that are floated on top of a reservoir. They're usually placed there for environmental reasons, for example, to slow evaporation from a reservoir or to prevent sunlight from causing reactions among chemical compounds present in the water. No matter the reason, they're important. However, due to them being half filled with water, they're especially heavy. And it was thanks to this that most manufacturers won't sell them to residential clients. However, it seems like one manufacturer made an exception for Veritasium. While he kept the water in the pool, on his first jump, he just put in 6,000 balls, and this was enough to cover his pool in a one-ball layer. While the balls made his swim harder, he still managed to do it, and noted that despite being designed to block out sunlight, about 11% of light hitting the water still went through, leading to the bottom of his pool showing some interesting reflections. When multiple more layers were added on for a total of 10,000 shade balls, it became nearly impossible to swim. With there being so many that Veritasium said that it was like floating in a ball pit with no water underneath them. As such, while his experiment was pretty cool, it's probably best that you don't try that at home. Number 1. The Astronaut Pool Officially, it's known as the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. The Astronaut Pool is one of the most historically significant pools on the planet. It's located near the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The pool was used, as the name suggests, to train astronauts. More specifically, the idea behind it is that training underwater is the closest thing we can get on Earth to working in microgravity, making work and experiments here absolutely essential. Coming in at 62 meters in length, 31 meters in width, and a depth of 12 meters, it is quite large, and actually replaced a smaller pool used in the 1980s. The reason for this replacement was quite simple. The old pool was too small to fit the mock-ups necessary to train astronauts on how to use the International Space Station, or ISS. With this in mind, this new pool is so large that it contains a full-scale mock-up of ISS modules and payloads alongside models of visiting vehicles, such as the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's HTV, the European Space Agency's ATV, the SpaceX Dragon, and the Orbital Sciences Corporation's Cygnus. By all accounts, the pool has worked very well in training astronauts. However, there have been some issues in recent years. You see, in the past, the primary job of the astronaut pool was to train astronauts on how to do construction work on the ISS. However, construction finished about 13 years ago, and while the pool is still used for mission training, it's now far bigger than it actually has to be. To make matters worse, in the wake of decreased government funding, NASA had to get creative in order to keep the lights on. This resulted in the unprecedented move to allow private companies to use the pool. First begun in 2011, this opening of the pool has been selective in accordance with the pool's prestige. While no weddings or birthdays are allowed on site, what has been allowed are three weekly dive runs by private oil and gas contractors. These contractors use the pool to do everything from testing robotic equipment to training rig employees on safe entrances and exits. Generally speaking, these contractors are not all interested in the size and depth of the pool. Instead, they're more enamored with its capabilities. After all, the pool is well instrumented, has multiple cameras, underwater communications, dive gear, and several on-site control rooms, allowing them to do mock-ups of almost any facility imaginable. To top this off, the facility also has 40 professional divers to support operations, helping to ensure that things run smoothly. Thankfully, NASA isn't the only space agency to have a pool of this kind. If we look around the world, we can find similar facilities. To date, three space agencies have such a pool. Russia's Roscosmos operates the so-called Hydro Lab, China's CNSA has the so-called Neutral Buoyancy Facility, and Europe's ESA, a facility also called the Neutral Buoyancy Facility, too. However, each seems to operate in very different ways. For example, Russia's Hydro Lab is a 1980s-era cylinder pool that's 23 meters wide and 12 meters deep, and used to train Russian astronauts that use the Russian segment of the International Space Station mock-ups. However, unlike its American counterpart, the public is allowed to visit, as they can don an Orlin M Russian EVA spacesuit and complete an underwater training. 
China's pool, though, is on the smaller side, as it's just as wide as its Russian counterpart is 2 meters shallower, though. Despite the size differential, it's the newest pool on this list, and it began operations in 2008. The European pool is the smallest of the four, although its recent refurbishment in 2020 has made it a top-of-the-line pool. Since then, it's been used for both microgravity and low-gravity moonwalk experiments. It's believed that its refurbishment should be sufficient for the next 10 to 15 years, and as space exploration and tourism take off, the ESA may just be able to be a forerunner in ensuring astronaut preparedness. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.